By the way, you guys all should have gotten the electronic PDF version of the textbook. Did anyone try to download it? Did it work? Yeah. Good. Okay, good. Um, I love it. I, I, I now don't carry the textbook at all with me. I just keep it on my computer. Okay. You can copy and paste off of it too, which is really nice. Uh, really, really nice. I use that when I'm doing my, the quizzes and stuff, for example. But anyways, um, so you've got that. You should have received the PowerPoint yesterday, um, this, this stuff yesterday. So, but in any case, we're going to talk about matter today. And again, we have a real world like experience with matter. I, I, I'm matter. Some of my best friends are made of matter and I, we work with the matter every day. Right. Um, but we got to take a step back and really think about what matter is. Okay. Um, because some of this can be a little counterintuitive. Like when we say you're made of matter, matter's made of atoms, but atoms are mostly empty space. Well, then how the heck am I not falling through the floor and like falling through chairs and walking through walls and stuff if atoms are mostly empty space, right? So we've got to understand really what we mean here. Um, and so I'll start off by saying that, um, have you ever actually touched anything? So like, I touched this desk, right? Taylor touched her desk, right? So we're touching things, right? What does that mean though? When I say I touched something, what's it mean? What am I saying when I say that? So what are you made of? And what am I made of? Matter, right? And what is the table made of? It's good. And if we touch, that means my matter and the table's matter came in contact, right? Good. But it's important to learn that there is no actual contact between the, the nucleus of the matter, right? What actually touches matter to matter are the electrons that orbit. And these electrons are, are actually not touching each other. They're just, they are repelled from each other. So what you're doing is you are, when you touch something, you are coming up against the electromagnetic forces of the atoms of that material and you're being repelled from those forces. We're being repelled from that material. You are never actually touching another piece of matter. It's the electric repulsion of your atoms and, and that material's atoms that we feel as touch. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I know. I, I, can't, I can't avoid it, you know. All negative. <laughs> All right, so matter, right? Matter is just defined as anything with shape and form that occupies space. Simply put, matter has mass. What does it mean to have mass? It means that you are made of matter and occupy space. So it's a circular statement, right? Matter occupies space and has mass. Mass is anything that occupies space and is matter. They're, they're um, defined by each other. Anything with mass under the influence of gravity can be weighed. You can't weigh a bucket of light, right? You can't hold a bucket of light. Light isn't matter. Light's a wave of energy. But I can hold a bucket of dirt. I can weigh a bucket of dirt, right? That's matter. It occupies space. Okay. Substances. Substances are just any matter with definite and consistent composition. The air in this room is a substance, water is a substance, wood is a substance. Substances break down to elements. The simplest form of a substance is an element. And that's what the story is ultimately going to come to, is going to come to talking about the elements, because that's what matter is made of. Every thing, every matter object that we know about in the universe exists on that periodic table of elements. Okay, that table of the elements tells us all of the different types of matter that we know about. Okay, so elements. Elements are, take a substance like the air in the room, break it apart into its individual components. What's the air made of? Nitrogen, oxygen, Argon, xenon, krypton, carbon dioxide. Take all these gases, separate them apart, put them into their individual boxes, right? 
The biggest box, by the way, will be the box of nitrogen because 78% of the air in the room is nitrogen gas, okay? Take that nitrogen gas and or take that box of nitrogen gas and what you have is you have a box filled with the element nitrogen, okay? That substance cannot be broken down further than the individual atoms that it's made of. Take a box of nitrogen, pluck out a nitrogen atom, and that's an element. That atom of nitrogen is going to stay as an atom of nitrogen. It's not going to be broken apart unless I do something to it, unless I do something that is not a normal chemical or mechanical thing and I, I break it apart. Maybe I strike it with extremely high energy photons, gamma rays, right? Shoot it with gamma rays and maybe the nitrogen falls apart, okay? But under normal circumstances, take a box of nitrogen gas that I got out of the air in this room, pluck an atom of nitrogen out of it, look at it, and it's not gonna change. That's element, that, that, is, that is what we mean when we say an element. So what I don't mean is like earth, water, wind, and fire which is what the ancient Greeks thought the elements were, right? And that makes sense because pretty much everything, that, if you're an ancient Greek and you don't have, you know, any of this modern knowledge, you look around, you're like, there's some earth, there's some water, right? I feel the wind go by me and things can burn, right? Everything that I know about is made of those four things, earth, water, wind, and fire, right? That doesn't tell me much nowadays, right? What we think of nowadays as the elements are what are the individual um, un- break apartable, <laughs> unbreakable pieces that everything's made of. Those are elements. The smallest single unit, so you got your box of nitrogen gas, you plucked out one of those atoms of nitrogen, you're holding an atom, okay? I hope we're all okay with the fact that I say pluck out an atom of nitrogen, but you can't actually do that. Is that okay? Because it's too small, right? Okay, good. But in, in perfect like analogy land, we can say pluck out an atom of nitrogen and hold it, okay? That's an atom, a single one, right? The smallest single unit of an element, the whole box is filled with a bunch of atoms of nitrogen. Take one of them, there you go, you have an atom of nitrogen. That atom of nitrogen is going to act like nitrogen, yeah? The atom, in the take the box of oxygen, pull out those oxygen molecules, take one of them out and hold it. That oxygen atom is going to behave like oxygen, which means that if you put that atom of oxygen in a box of other atoms of oxygen, it's going to bond with them. Okay, we'll talk about the chemical bonds later and why that happens. But take a take an atom of oxygen, throw it into a box of oxygen, and it's going to link up to form O2. Right? Air in the room doesn't exist as O and O. It exists as O2. Two oxygen molecules bond together to form O2. It does that anytime you take oxygen and throw it into a box of other oxygen molecules, it will always find one to hang on to, okay? Unless there's other molecules in there that it can make a bond with, but the point is, in a box of oxygen, you're gonna have O2, not a bunch of individual oxygen atoms. But take that atom out, there's my oxygen atom, it's gonna behave like oxygen, always, okay? Unless I, unless I do something to it to change it into not oxygen, it's gonna behave like oxygen, okay? Simply put, that atom of oxygen that I pluck out of the box will retain all of oxygen's chemical behaviors. Okay, it'll act like oxygen. That's it. So chemical behavior, chemistry. Chemistry is simply take all of those atoms on the periodic table and tell me how they interact with each other. How do atoms interact with each other? That's what chemistry is. Chemistry is, or chemical behavior, is the making or breaking of connections between atoms. Okay? Atoms will either connect, disconnect, join up with other atoms to form larger molecules. They will tear apart larger atoms to form smaller molecules. All of those interactions are, are the interactions of chemistry. So that's what chemistry deals with, the interactions of atoms and other atoms um, and, and how, they, how they react with each other. Okay, some more terms to get out on the table. A compound, a substance in which atoms of different elements are bound together chemically. Compound means more than one element. So O2 is not a compound. O2 is a molecule, 
because it's two atoms, but it's two atoms of oxygen. So it's the same two atoms. What might be an everyday example of um, a compound that we deal with? Think about something you interact with every day. You're mostly made of it. H2O. Yeah, H2O, right? That's a compound, right? It's two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, chemically bonded together. And that says right there, a substance in which different atoms, different elements are bound together chemically. That's what a water is. That's what H2O is, OK? Um, mixtures are a little bit different. So mixtures are take some substances, take some compounds like, um, well, I'll give you an example here. Barium sulfate suspension is a mixture, OK? Barium sulfate is used in radiography for to make a contrast dye in radiography. Barium sulfate is barium sulfur oxygen, OK? You don't need to worry about how many of each thing right now, but barium sulfate is barium sulfur and oxygen, OK? They show it, B-A-S-O uh, subscript 4. But in order to make barium sulfate, which comes as a powder, I've got to take the powder, and like making Nesquik, I've got to pour water. You don't even pour milk into Nesquik, but in this case, water, right? And I mix the barium sulfate with water to make it into like a milkshake, OK? And the patient then can drink that milkshake, and I can see the contrast dye lining their intestines. But the point is, is that when I mix barium sulfate and water, they don't bond with each other chemically. The water and barium sulfate suspension is just a bunch of water and a bunch of barium sulfate all mixing around each other but not changing chemically. There's still barium sulfate and there's still water. They're just mixed together. They're not bonded together. Okay. So that's what mixtures are. Mixtures are combinations of two or more substances that are not chemically bound together. They will separate over time. You can mix oil and water together, and over time, they will separate from each other, right? You can mix cream into coffee, and over time, it will do some version of separation, right? You leave your coffee alone for long enough, right? Um, okay, so that's what mixtures are. Mixtures are mixed but not chemically bonded. And then the word molecule. Molecule is just saying, I have an atom, and it's chemically connected to at least one other atom. You can have very large molecules like your body makes, which things like the largest molecule in your body is DNA. DNA is extremely long. Um, it's, it's like nanometers long, but it's still extremely long for molecule standards. Um, two or more atoms chemically bound together. A molecule is the smallest single unit of a compound. Oxygen, for example. Take a compound of oxygen, a box of oxygen gas, pluck out one thing from there. If you grab one thing out of the box of oxygen gas, you're going to pull out a molecule of oxygen, two oxygen atoms which are chemically bonded together. You're going to pull that out, you're going to look at it, go, yep, there's my molecule, and you'll put it back into the compound. 